In 2008, a team of researchers at California University made the remarkable discovery that sound as a vibration could alter human neurophysiology. Using the neuroimaging technique of electroencephalography, or EEG, they found that sound frequencies between 90 to 120 hertz induced an asymmetrical suppression of activity in the prefrontal cortex, a brain region believed to be involved in the regulation of emotional and cognitive activity. This curious effect on the prefrontal cortex is believed to be due to the direct vibratory effect of longitudinal sound waves on the structures and cellular processes of the central nervous system, and not the effect of sound as an audible sensation or perception as transduced by our neurosensory faculties, such as the cochlea and basilar membrane. The concept of vibration having a physiological effect is scientifically well-founded. We know that vibration can stimulate osteogenesis or bone growth via the activation of osteoblasts. We know that it can trigger anaphylactoid reactions via mast cell degranulation. And we know that it can also cause the constriction of capillaries, causing what is known as Raynaud's phenomenon. Thus, the idea that sound vibration could have a physiological effect is eminently plausible. Interestingly, the shift in brain activity reported in the California study correlates with the change in brain activity observed in functional magnetic resonance imaging studies of people taking psychedelics. Indeed, in fMRI studies of people taking psilocybin, the active compound in magic mushrooms, we also observe an asymmetric suppression of the prefrontal cortex, which correlates strongly with the subjective phenomenology of the psychedelic experience. This raises an interesting question. Could sound as a vibration be used to induce altered states of consciousness? And moreover, is this something that ancient civilizations knew about, but which we have subsequently forgotten? The use of sound as a psychedelic could explain why quite so many prehistoric ancient megalithic sites, such as the Hypogeum in Malta and Newgrange in Ireland, appear to be highly resonant by design, typically at frequencies between 90 to 120 Hz, the same frequencies which the California study demonstrated can alter our neurophysiology. It might also explain why musical instruments have been found deep within highly resonant prehistoric caves, and why the cave paintings we find there depict the same entoptic and therianthropic figures that are commonly associated with psychedelic experiences. Incidentally, notice the remarkable similarity of the spiral glyphs present at both the Hypogeum in Malta and 1,500 miles away at Newgrange in Ireland that are reminiscent of what we see in prehistoric cave paintings. The concurrence of these glyphs suggests either the existence of a surprisingly well-travelled prehistoric culture operating at both sites, or perhaps more plausibly, an anthropogenic phenomenon such as the induction of entoptic percepts through the use of some form of mind-altering substance or practice. The use of sound as a psychedelic might also explain the employment of monotonal sound in various religious practices, such as Gregorian chants, Tibetan singing bowls, and the sacred mantra Om used in Eastern tradition. It might explain the use of shamanistic songs, such as the Ikaros, that are used to modulate and guide psychedelic experiences. It may explain why we find what appear to be sound diagrams or cymatics carved into temples and religious artefacts all over the world, perhaps representing the equivalent of a transcendental calling card or frequency channel through which one can initiate contact with specific gods, realms or phenomena. And it could be why large bowed tuning forks, some eight feet high, were reportedly found in the Great Pyramid of Giza, and why the king's chamber and the coffer in the king's chamber are acoustically coupled. Indeed, the Egyptians themselves conveyed to us in writing that sound was used in a way that transcended mere semantics or sensation. For them, sound was a means of performing magic, as they say in the pharaonic texts. As for us, we do not use simple words, but sounds filled with power. Despite the fact that we know vibration can alter human physiology, and despite the historical evidence for the esoteric use of sound in various religious and cultural practices for millennia, hardly any scientific research has been done in this area. A good place to start would be to decipher the sounds encoded in ancient structures and cymatics, and then to use neuroimaging techniques to determine whether or not they induce any significant physiological or phenomenological effects. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.